Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Robert Lowry. Dustin Daniel is alongside for this championship affair. And the University of Alaska Anchorage and Western Washington, both of them had the opportunity to just watch last year's affair. This year, they have come back out and they have played so very, very well. You see University of Alaska Anchorage right here. This is from their semifinal victory yesterday against Seattle Pacific in 86-85 affair. And as you can see right here, they did a lot of it from long range. There's Tyrus Hosley with a three from outside. Nico Bevins, who is absolutely in fuego early. And everybody was getting into the act, it seemed like yesterday, including the big fella, Augie Panovich, scoring on the inside. Big, strong young man. You can watch the post moves he has here with a little jump hook in the lane. And Pantovich had a great job and got the great, great feed right there from Brimhall, Tyler Brimhall for the basket. So they got it done inside. They got it done outside. They came up with a, a quarterfinal victory against Northwest at Nazarene, 85 to 76. And then yesterday, that exciting victory over the top seeded Falcons of Seattle Pacific. And right now, the University of Alaska Anchorage may be playing its best basketball of the season. Well, throughout the season, they've been one of the best three-point shooting teams in the conference. Ended the season tied for the best three-point shooting percentage with Western Oregon. And that's what's carried them through this tournament so far. If they want to compete here today, that's going to need to continue. And the nice thing for the Seawolves is they haven't been relying on one guy. Now, Nico Bevin stepped up in a big way yesterday. Helped set the single-season school record and made three-pointers. But they can go to McDonald. They can go to Hosley. They can go to Carlberg. All four of those guys can shoot the three at an incredibly efficient pace. And so for University of Alaska at Anchorage today, we're going to be looking at that three-point shooting. Are they going to be able to get it done from the outside, especially given the interior size of Western Washington? Well, as they did against the bigger Seattle Pacific team yesterday, they opened them up, starting with the outside shooting. Panovich got going a little bit later on the inside, and that carried them to the hard-fought one-point victory over the homestanding Falcons. Now, for their opponent, Western Washington University, they come in as the number two seed, and here are some highlights from their contest yesterday when they knocked off in the semifinal contest. Came up with the victory yesterday over the University of Alaska Fairbanks, kind of the Cinderella team. And this guy did a lot of the damage. Tyler Jasinski, long range there from three. Watch, here's another one, same spot on the floor, knocks that down as well. Defensively on the inside, they did a nice job. And well, the guy who got the start yesterday because of injury, that was Cameron Rutherford right there. And he went down after the block on one end, came down with a slam dunk on the other end. And he actually did a real nice job in that victory yesterday against the University of Alaska Fairbanks. So Western Washington advances. They advance with the victory over Fairbanks yesterday, 76 to 64. University of Alaska Anchorage with the 86-85 victory over Seattle Pacific in the semis and the 85-76 victory over NNU in the quarters. And really that game hinged on the second half when the University of Alaska Anchorage really, they just got on uh, really on fire offensively in the second half. They outscored the Nighthawks 48 to 37 in that contest. So that is how we got to where we are here tonight. Men's championship game of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Now, this is a matchup that has happened before, though never in a contest between these two teams. University of Alaska Anchorage and Western Washington have met twice before in the championships. In 2015, it was number five, number five of Western Washington, the same seating that this year University of Alaska Anchorage holds, knocking off the number four Seawolves in 2015 in the quarters, 73 to 56, kind of a big win there for Western Washington. And then the very next year, and another situation with the lower seated Vikings, came up with a win over the higher seeded Sea Wolves, 78 to 73. Tournament records of these two schools since 2011, and that is when the GNAC went to the tournament format. UAA is five and eight overall. They lost in the championship game in 2011. That was the first year of the conference championships to Central Washington. They lost in the championship game to number five. And again, they're number five this year. Number five, Montana State Billings in 2012. 
They lost in the quarters in 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016 did UAA. They lost in the semis in 2017. They lost in the quarters in 2018. And they missed last year's tournament, but they had a run of eight straight tournament appearances. Western Washington, 7-7 seven and seven since 2011. Lost in the quarterfinals in 2011. They were the number one seed in 2012. They lost in the semis there. They lost a champ, and that was the year they went on to the national championship. 2013, they lost in the championship. Same in 2014, same in 2015 when they were seeded fifth. They lost in the semis in 2016. They won the GNAC championship in 2017, and they lost in the semis in 2018. And as we mentioned, they missed the tournament last year. But two teams, again, didn't even compete in the GNAX last year. They have come back this year, and they are battling for the Great Northwest Athletic Conference Championship. It would be the first for the Seawolves in tournament play. Western looking for its second tournament championship. And there's a great look at Rusty Osborne. You know what he's doing tonight? He's looking for victory number 300 in his coaching career. And there's an interesting tie to that. We'll get to that here in just a couple of minutes. But we're going to introduce the starters. We're going to get set to tip it off here from Royal Brougham Pavilion at Seattle Pacific University. But before we do, we are going to have our national anthem here before today's contest. And once again, Seattle Pacific is bringing out a young man, a 13-year-old competitive swimmer for the national anthem. What can you say? That was a great rendition of our national anthem. Let's go ahead and give you the starting lineups now as they are going to be introduced here. First of all, the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves. The first player introduced, the three-point specialist, Nico Bevan, 6'6", senior out of Beaverton, Oregon. A guy who probably has an opportunity to maybe pick up MVP honors right there of the tournament. Tyrus Hosley, 6'1", senior, Vancouver, Washington. In the middle, Augie Pantovich, coming off a big performance yesterday, 6'7", junior, out of Kovan, Serbia. Here is Tovan Karlberg, who had some foul problems yesterday and, and didn't get to play as much as I'm sure he would have liked to. And Jack McDonald, a six-foot senior from Melbourne, Australia, the last player announced. Carlberg, by the way, I should mention, stayed right at home to play his college basketball. Anchorage, Alaska, hometown, played at Grace Christian for head coach Rusty Osborne. And now for the Vikings, the number two seed, there is the guy we saw before the game in some of those highlights, Trevor Jasinski, 6'8", senior from Camas. And here is Cameron Rutherford starting in place of the injured Jalen Green, 6'9", senior, Portland, Oregon. In the middle, Logan Shoulder, 
Schilder, seven foot senior from Bellingham. And the guards will now be introduced. D'Angelo Minnis, the point guard, five at 10 redshirt freshman out of Covington. And the other guard, a 6'6 senior out of Concord, California, Sihan, Sihan Rojas. And the head coach of the Vikings, Tony Dominguez. Coaching matchup again, Osborne, 299 wins, 179 defeats in his 16th season. He is the 28th GNAC coach of the year. Tony Dominguez, 167 victories, 76 defeats in his eighth campaign, 2013 and 2017. He was named the GNAC Coach of the Year. Now, the reason I brought up the 300 wins for Rusty Osborne, earlier this year, Greg Sparling, the head coach of the University of Alaska Fairbanks, he got his 400th career victory against the same Western Washington University team. Is, is there anything to be made about it, that? Probably not, but it is certainly interesting nonetheless. It, it's a nice coincidence, to, to say the least. Yeah. Uh, another thing I think interesting, First time these two teams met in the GNAC championships, it was when this Western Washington team, team was the number five seed, knocked off the number four seed in Seawolves yes. back in 2015. That team went all the way to the GNAC championship game as well. So Tony Dominguez has been at the helm of a team that has got the number five seed and gone all the way to the championship game. So he knows the spot the Seawolves are at right now. Schilder with a significant size advantage in the center jump circle against Panovich. I think Schilder may have. Well, I, look at that. Panovich actually outjumped him there, but it goes to Western as they have the basketball to begin the contest. We've got a five-inch difference between those two, but it's going to be a big matchup to watch. The inside-outside battle, Panovich and Schilder, Bevins and Jasinski. Going to watch that all night. Well, there's Rojas with an open three for the Vikings. Misses it, rebound tipped out, and Minnis has the offensive rebound. That's something that UAA will not be able to afford tonight to allow Western Washington to have multiple opportunities at the bucket. Cross-court pass with a shot clock down in single digits, and Jasinski launches but missed the three. Ball out of bounds into the Seawolves bench, and it's going to be UAA basketball. They're in the gold jerseys tonight. McDonald going to get it into Carlberg, and he'll bring it across the timeline with the left-hand dribble and hand off to the quarterback, Hosley. I'll tell you, Hosley has played so well in this tournament, very under control. Baseline, Panovich with a lift fake, but Schilder closes out on him. Augie takes him inside, spins up and under with a left hand off the back rim, Schilder tips. Panovich with the offensive rebound. Out to Hosley, three on the way. A little bit short. Carlberg with the offensive rebound. And that's something the Western really probably can't afford either. Tobin oh. Carlberg, six foot, getting between a couple guys, six five and bigger. And there is going to be a foul on Panovich. And that is something that Rusty Osborne is not going to like. Now, interestingly, in the meeting, and there is the shot by... Tyrus on the outside, and Panovich, yeah, he, he bumped him from behind. Panovich in that game earlier this year in Bellingham, 33 points, 12 rebounds, big double-double in speaking, that contest. Speaking to the matchup between these two teams this year, Western Washington got them both, but four-point games yeah. both times, including going to OT in Bellingham. Very tight matchup this year. Rojas left corner, and travel going to be called there. Yeah, in that game up in Bellingham, Schilder had uh, a double-double as well, 17 and 15. So that's a big double-double for the big fella. So both centers played so well as you see what happened right there. McDonald into the forecourt. The Seawolves team has three guys, really four around the perimeter, who handle the ball quite well, including that guy right there. That's Hosley. Across the top, Carlberg. Tobin takes it in, flips behind him. Bevins, that's where he launched from yesterday, and that's why the 6'9 Rutherford is on him today. So Carlberg says, I'm going to try it. Rims in and out. Shoulder tips the rebound to himself and flips it off to Minnis. Well, Alaska Anchorage trying their luck from the outside early on. Three of their first four shots have been three-pointers. Well, Rojas going to try another one. And we still are scoreless. And Bevins hustles and saves the rebound from going out of bounds. So we're more than two minutes deep in this one, and we're scoreless. Western Washington 0 for 3 from the field, all three-pointers. As we talked about, Anchorage 0 of 3 from deep, 0 of 4 in total. Panovich for 3, and he knocks it in. He hit a big one yesterday. I was talking to Nate Sagan, the UAA Sports Information Director. He says Panovich's percentage from 3 is not good overall, not great. But he says the ones he are the big ones, 
he tends to make, and that was a big one. Only a 26% shooter from three-point range. That's the only 11th one he's made this year. But they, but according to Nate, he's about an 80%er when they're needed. And Panovich now going to take a quick break. As for the first time tonight, we're going to see David Riley, 6'8 junior, out of Farmington, New Mexico, come in. He has been a part-time starter this year, too. Runner on the baseline. Boy, I don't know how Jasinski got that one off. Kind of awkward shot, but he got it to drop 3-2. Oh, Jasinski, we've seen throughout this tournament being able to hit those fadeaways and tough defense as a spot he thrives. Carl Berg, Hosley, left fake, spins away from Rojas, kicks it down low, and boy, Riley inside, but has a shot knocked away on the inside. I think it was Rutherford who got it there. And Rojas into the forecourt on the right side. Down low, and a foul called shoulder was doubled up there. McDonald, though, is the guy who's going to be called for the foul as he came over to help double up on the big fella on the inside. Here's that last shot, or that last pass by Hosley to Riley. Well, I guess Rutherford's the guy who got a fingertip on it, and you can see Rutherford there kind of grimacing a little bit as he went back on the offensive end, and now Jasinski loses it out of bounds. Jasinski in the meetings this year, well, he's... He's played well. He had seven points, five rebounds. Kind of a pedestrian game for him in the one in Bellingham. But he had 11 points and six boards in Anchorage. Looking for his first real breakout game this year against the Seawolves. Bevan just lost it. Dribbled it right off the knee or maybe the shin out of bounds. That's kind of like in tennis. Do they call it the unforced error? It just goes to the turnover here. It could be either a great steal but, or a lost ball. But... That's kind of an unforced turnover and a gift back to Western Washington. Rojas, there is Jasinski inside, preseason player of the year, missed it, but Rutherford, as he did yesterday, comes in and cleans up the mess with the deuce and gives the Vikings their first lead of the game. Second offensive rebound for Western Washington, so they're getting second looks early on in this game, but tough shots taken by both sides. Rutherford getting the easy layup after a difficult layup tried by Jasinski. Here is Bevins with a long three, and McDonald, or make that Carlberg. He, he rebounds way better than a guy his size should. Well, we've already seen him strong arm a guy six inches taller than him for a rebound in this game. Bevins with a push off foul against Rutherford. So the turnover will bring us to our first timeout of the session. 15.37 to go. Low scoring affair so far. Western Washington, the number two seed, the number five seed. The Seawolves of the University of Alaska Anchorage is 4-3 Vikings here on GNAC.TV. I picked MSU Billings for its academic access and excellence. I saw it as a way to reinvent myself. I chose MSU Billings for a better life for myself and for my children. MSUB has really helped me discover my career path. No matter what you're interested in, there are more than 150 programs to fit your career aspirations. MSUB has just opened up so many doors academically, professionally, and personally. It's not just about getting a degree. It's about going out and changing the world. There's Jasinski on that drive, and Rutherford sneaks in among three Seawolves to put in the put back, and that gave the Vikings their lead. They have made a change as well as Leif Anderson, who leads the Great Northwest Athletic Conference in assist to turnover ratio, lobs it into shoulder, out into the corner. Jasinski's three, no good. Scramble for the basketball, and look who gets it. D'Angelo Minnis, smallest guy on the floor to Anderson. They dish it down low to Shoulder. Hosley was on him on a switch. And, uh, well, Shoulder was able to shed Hosley and come up with a strong two-handed slam dunk. Back the other way, Carlberg on the far side of the rim with the left hand, puts it up. He's able to knock it in, and it's a 6-5 game. 
Minnis and Anderson now in the backcourt with his shoulder up front. Look at Carlberg has shoulder now. He puts it up and misses it, and then shoulder going to foul as Hosley came down with a rebound. Western's doing a real nice job getting mismatches on the inside, and that was about a foot size differential there. Well, that's exactly what it was. So that last trip down the floor when it was Hosley, it was an 11-inch advantage for Shielder on that dunk that we see in the highlights. And then with Carlberg, it was a 12-inch advantage. Oh. you got to get those layups to go when you have that big of a size differential. Logan Shielder not able to finish at the iron. Then it cost Western Washington a foul as well. So Shielder picks up one. And the Seawolves with the basketball. Both teams have played straight man-to-man -man at least to this point. And here is McDonald slashing drive in the lane. Leaves it out for Brimhall who penetrates and puts up a runner with the right hand on the right side and knocks it down. He's having an incredibly efficient tournament so far. With that bucket, 12 of 16 from the field shooting, taking him up to 75%. Yeah, he's averaging 13 points in the tournament this year off the bench. And that's Seacrest who has come in. R.J. Seacrest and a three-pointer on the outside. Missed by the Vikings. Rebound tipped out of bounds. Went off one of the Vikings. Has now coming back in as well to give Hosley his first breather. DeAndre Osigwe. Here's the move by Brimhall. Splits the defense. And there's the little floater there as Seacrest came out to challenge, but too late. Seawolves basketball. Carlberg guarded by Seacrest. Seawolves. Well, they're a great passing team. And boy, McDonald steps inside the line and hits the baseline jump shot. UAA number one in the GNAC in assists coming into the action tonight. 17.6 assists per game. Wow, that, that's a big, that is a big number. And here is Rutherford lost the basketball. Bevins lost it back to Rutherford. Kicks it left. The left-hander Anderson for three and he knocks it in. Leif, 6'1", senior out of Bellingham, as we mentioned. Assist to turnover ratio. He is number one, and he is number one by a mile. Almost four to one in the assist to turnover ratio. That's in a tremendous, tremendous ratio. McDonald inside. Nobody picks him up. He lays it in. You know what they tell you when you start youth basketball? Stop penetration. Stop the ball. Nobody did for Western that time, and they gave up the lay-in. That gives the Seawolves the lead at 11 to 9. Oh, McDonald cuts between two help defenders. I think both of them thought the other was going to cut to the bucket. Anderson knocks in another long range three. The Bellingham senior making his presence known right here as he gives the Vikings a lead. A foul on the other end is Carlberg made a spin move and Seacrest guilty of the arm bar. Hosley going to return as. Nico Bevin's going to take his first breather as you get a look at that Anderson three. Carlberg, he closed out on him. Not real aggressive, but he closed out and challenged the shot. But Anderson looks like he's been shooting that all day long. And boy, he knocked that one down pretty from the left corner. Well, both offenses starting to warm up. Seawolves now four for their last four after starting one of seven from the field. Now both sides shooting over 40%. Four guards around the outside. and. Really, Brimhall, the only big in there for UAA. This is about as small a lineup as we have seen. Shot clock at three. Carlberg goes inside, misses the shot, and the rebound taken by, by Luke Lovelady, who's checked in to play up front to Minnis for three good. So right. D'Angelo Minnis with the long ranger. Third made three-pointer now from Western Washington. As Anderson's had the first two, Minnis will join them, both perfect from deep. I'll tell you one thing, we have seen Panovich on the bench for a number of minutes here. Osigwe penetrates inside, kicks it out into the corner, and McDonald just dribbled it right off his leg. And we have a timeout on the floor. Turnover Seawolves, basketball back to the Vikings. You see Osigwe there with the pass out to McDonald, and just Tip the ball out of bounds on the dribble. And with that turnover, we have a timeout on the floor. Back with more of the men's championship, the 2020 GNAC Championships, here on GNAC.tv. The need for officials has never been greater. Without officials, we don't have this. Make the 
the right call. Become an official at highschoolofficials.com. I'm Robert Lowry, Dustin Daniel alongside, and there is the menace three-point shot. And Western Washington with the basketball as they're gonna try to increase this lead. But the Seawolf is gonna put up a little pressure defense. Well, Seacrest beats it into the corner. Anderson three, like before, and he knocks down his third consecutive three-point shot of this first half. He has been the star, frankly, for the Vikings. Penetration, Brimhall off to Hosley. Down by seven, Hosley in the lane. Out to Brimhall, fakes, shoots, and misses the three. Seacrest rebound for the Vikings. Leif Anderson starting this game three of three from deep leads all scores with a quick nine points. Here's Seacrest pull up. That's going to be down the bottom of the netting as well. Western has caught fire here in the last couple of minutes and with it a nine-point lead. And UAA with this small unit on the floor has now brought Pantovich back in. But Osigwe casts off and he knocks down a much, much needed three. That'll slow the momentum of Western Washington a little bit. And you can hear in the background, this is a Viking heavy crowd as Bellingham just up the road, not far for these fans to have to come down to root on their team. Love Lady spins on Pantovich up and under, misses it. Pantovich snares the, ba the board, and here is Osigwe out of backcourt. He'll take it all the way, and he'll be fouled. Menace with a hand check, as they say. And with that, ball out of bounds. It is the third team foul. This is the fifth time the Western men's and women's teams have both been in the championship game in the same year as we will see both these schools in the women's game as well to come at 7.30 tonight. Osigwe, mid-floor, Hosley gonna go to work on Rojas. Leaves behind him at the head of the key for Osigwe. Shot clock at nine as he passes back off to Hosley. Western's defense has been very strong so far. Hosley, Panovich resets, three on the way, in and out. That was a heartbreaker. Anderson had the rebound, knocked away, and went off a Seawolves player out of bounds. That was a nice move on the top side by Panovich. You see that fake getting shoulder in the air. Gets a good look. It's not going to go every time. As we talked about, Panovich only shooting 26% from deep. And I'm not so sure that that is where Rusty Osborne wants to see him taking his majority of shots. Shoulder is back on floor. Jasinski off to Anderson. He'll dish it into Shoulder, lays it up and in. Well, I don't know where Leif Anderson has been throughout the tournament. Played a little bit yesterday and, and, and played okay. But boy, he has played lights out basketball here tonight. He got limited time in yesterday's game, but we, we made the comment during the contest that he had a really good first shift on the floor for the Vikings. Pandovich stepped through, now with a little baby jump hook, misses it. Carlberg is there to follow it up and in. Anderson has been the best player on the floor to this point for either team. Rojas down floor, guarded by Osigwe, takes him off the bounce. Osigwe reaches in, and he's going to be whistled for the foul. Boy, he thought he got it cleanly. Here is the move by Pantovich on the inside. And you brought it up that he really has some great post moves, and Carlberg is there to clean it up. At the free throw line, Sion Rojas. He has two shots coming. Misses the first. One more to come with the six-point lead for the Vikings. Rojas has struggled at the line this year. 65% free throw shooter. As a team, Western Washington 
a 75% free throw shooting team. But interestingly enough, they have taken more free throws than any other team in the GNAC coming into tonight's action. He misses them both. And look at Osigwe climb the ladder to come down with the rebound. So it's going to be a six-point lead. It'll stay there as we have Osigwe step back and launch and miss a three. Rojas with the rebound. Comes up the left side of the floor. And his entry pass by Osigwe knocked away. Anderson tried to get it in. Osigwe knocked it away. They were looking for Rutherford down low. Now here is a slashing move by Brimhall and Schilder. One of the, the leading shot blocker blocks the shot. And then the Vikings lose the basketball. I think Osigwe quick handed it away. And then it might have gone off Minnis last right in front of the Vikings bench. Yeah, Minnis diving for it in front of his own bench, trying to take it away from Osigwe. Does manage to strip it away from the Alaska Anchorage guard, but then takes it out of bounds with him, so it'll stay on this end. And there is the block by Schilder, and Rutherford had it, but Osigwe knocked it away, and there was a scramble, and yeah, you can see it right there. Great camera work by our crew as Minnis knocks it out of bounds. So the Seawolves. Maintain possession, McDonald hand off to Bevins who's come back in. Hosley around a high screen, leave it left for Panovich, thought three. Now he's gonna take it down the left lane, backs in, moves around shoulder and Logan gonna foul him. That'll be the second on shoulder. Now Western does have the luxury if they have some big bodies, they have Love Lady, they can move Rutherford certainly into the into the post as well and now tony dominguez notes that should be a timeout and it is 753 to go in the opening half of play it is western washington 22 university of alaska agri 16. these are the 2020 men's basketball championships at the great northwest athletic conference championship tournament this is it the moment you've dreamed of worked for sacrificed for. This is the moment you go from seeking a degree to being sought after. Top companies all across Alaska are looking for University of Alaska Anchorage grads to power their businesses into the future because they know UAA grads are smart, qualified, capable, and backed by a strong supportive community. Apply today and seize the moment. Here's that steal that led to Anderson's three from the left corner, knocked that one down. Same spot, a little deeper in the corner, knocks that down, and well, the third of three. From the, he likes that left corner. He seems to like that left pocket there. Three from that overall area. Anderson this year's high game was 11. Actually, check me, he had 12 against St. Martin's at St. Martin's and actually 15 at Western Oregon. So he has had a number of double-figure games, a couple of 11s, 15, 12. So he, he is capable of scoring in double figures, but right now you got to believe he is on the verge of setting his season high in points. He's off the floor. No, he stays on floor, and he has McDonald defensively right now as it's UAA basketball. Anderson well on his way, nine points and eight minutes of work off the bench. And Panovich gets loose. Rutherford had him, went for the steal on the entry pass, and uh, Panovich got it, and, and Rutherford slid by him. He gave him the opportunity to go to the hoop for the dunk. Here's a pull-up pop. Seacrest missed it, or make that menace missed it. Gets his own rebound as he followed. Gets it to Rojas, long three, good. That's a deep one for Sion Rojas. Good four or five feet beyond the arc. But no hesitation, a lot of confidence from Rojas to take that shot. Well, this is a good look at Rojas shot from the outside. He set himself and got it off cleanly. Approaching seven minutes left in the first half with the Vikings on top by seven. Panovich down low, working on Rutherford again. Backs down, backs down, spins, left-hander up and misses off the front rim. Carr or make that McDonald would after it, but Rutherford able to pull it away from him. And give credit to the UAA guards. They are scrappy going after that offensive rebound. Yeah, they're crashing the boards. It's turned into four offensive rebounds already for the Seawolves. <laughs> there is a, there's a pass by Menes. He was looking for Rutherford, and he threw it in. 
And it was a th apparently a three-point shot as well. Wow. No, they're just going to give him a two on that. Okay. I thought they were going to give him a three there for a second. Uh, he's a good couple steps inside of the arc. Just look for the alley-oop inside to Rutherford. Got lucky. And here is the drive by Hosley. Puts it up and in. Yeah, he was. that was not a shot. That was definitely a pass that went down. So I wonder if he gives gives himself the assist and the shot there as well. Here is Menace. Penetrates inside. Panovich chases him back out on the perimeter. Down low boy Rutherford that got Hosley in a switch. And the entry pass got Hosley in no man's land and a foul. It's interesting that the, the group they have had on the floor. And here's a look at it here. Okay, Menace going to circle. He's going to look on the inside. There he is behind the arc. Lobs it up to the hoop. Right in. <laughs> I, I haven't seen that uh, many times, I don't think. Maybe never. You know, it was such an off-handed pass, too. Yeah. It's not like he was using a two-hand over the top to, no. to dump it inside. It just goes to the side with the right. Huh? Found the bucket. Change made for the Seawolves. First time we have seen tonight Amari Hale, who is in, and he right now has the defensive assignment on Minnis. Now on the switch, Minnis goes inside, lays it in. They're using that topside screen to try to create the switch, and, and when they do so, Western has been effective as they lead it by nine. Uh, it, it works out really well in that match because you get Hale on Rutherford and then Panovich on Minnis. Two options if you're the Vikings to utilize that mismatch. McDonald fall away at the free throw line, shot no good. Hosley after it, able to save it back out to McDonald. He'll crash inside, have the ball knocked away, kick it to Hosley. Three-pointer on the way. Back rims it, no good. Rebound taken down by the Vikings, and that's Seacrest. Seacrest and Minnis in the back court with Jasinski, Rutherford, and Rojas. So three guards on floor for the Vikings. Minnis around that high pick once again. They work the ball to the right side. Rojas going to take another long range. This one's offline to the left, and Hale secures the rebound. Flat-footed rebound for the Seawolves. Hale end-to-end, -end, up and under in the lane, missed it. Scrambles for it, can't get his own rebound as Rutherford grabs another. Western Washington has presented opportunities for the Seawolves to chip away at this lead, but Alaska Anchorage not taking advantage of them, just shooting 36% from the field right now, nearly 20 percentage points worse than the Vikings. Rojas, another three, good. Well, Rojas is having a, he's picking up where Anderson left off with some long range shots. Hosley gonna go back down floor. High Archer off the glass, missed it, but got knocked down. And he'll go to the free throw line. Foul on Rojas. Here's the penetration by Hosley. And yeah, there was some contact there, no question. And to the free throw line goes Tyrus Hosley. Hosley at the stripe tonight. Trying to cut into this now 12 point Viking lead. There's a good look at old number 11. Well, not old, certainly young man. And shoots and knocks in the first. Now, interestingly, he is one of a number of players. He's number two on the team, Amari Hale, Tobin Carlberg, Jack McDonald, all in that assist to turnover category. They're all among the top 10 in the Gene Act. They don't, they just don't get, they just don't turn the ball over. That's what it comes down to. Well, they've done a good job so far, limited the turnovers, only given up four, but when they have made mistakes and given up the basketball, Western Washington taking advantage of it to this point. Already 10 points off of turnovers for the Vikings. There's a good look at Tony Dominguez. And the Vikings now looks like the, well, they're going to fight it over the top here. Minnis leaves behind him for Rutherford goes inside, misses it, and a blocking foul, I think, on the inside against Panovich. And that is the case. Bang, bang, play on the inside. It probably could have gone either way, but with the second personal foul and still 351 left in this first half, Augie Panovich is going to immediately go to the bench. And as he does, everybody goes to the bench because we have a timeout. 3.51 left to go in the opening half of play. Vikings, the second seed, a 10-point lead. Here is the pass down low earlier in this half as Pantovich goes inside 
and puts it down with a little bit of thunder on GNAC.TV. At Central Washington University, welcome is more than a word. It's an experience. Welcome to exploration. And learning together. Discover the world. Or create your own. Welcome means we'll help you succeed with everything from low tuition to some of the best teaching faculty in the nation. Find out where you belong. You belong here. Welcome to Central! Hey, Wildcat fans. Be a part of the Central Washington University Athletics family by joining the Wildcat Club today. Wildcat Club members provide a positive experience and competitive resources for more than 400 student athletes. Your donation supports a program on the rise where students excel both on the field and in the classroom. When you enhance the student athlete experience, you help your Wildcats compete for conference and national championships. Go, Go Cats! Cats. There's the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves team coming back on floor. You know, we haven't talked about it much tonight, but Jalen Green, again, a, a key performer for Tony Dominguez's team, a GNAC All-Star this year, out with a, with a wrist injury, and the man stepping to the free throw line has filled in admirably here at the tournament as Cameron Rutherford is up at the free throw line right here. The Vikings have battled the injury bug all year. They've had nine different starting lineups in 28 games. Rutherford knocks in the shot there that extends, and you can see some of the Viking faithful here at Royal Brome Pavilion at Seattle Pacific who've come down from Bellingham about, oh, I don't know, 90 minutes away to the northwest of us. And Rutherford with one more to come. And he hits them both. Well, you can see that they think the Vikings are number one. Uh, they have traveled well today, that's for sure. Rutherford, four points, four boards, two assists, and a steal already. Well, that's a nice stat line. Hosley around the outside. Rutherford picks him up. Hosley shot, pops around the popcorn popper and decides to drop through. So Tyrus Hosley keeps it at a 10-point lead. And no lead in this tournament, frankly, throughout the quarters, throughout the semis, has been safe. It really hasn't. Now we've seen teams lead by 16 go down. Yeah. We've seen fives, six seeds win. And we've seen Jasinski hit a lot of outside shots, including that one right there. Well, there, there's no question he is a, a great player and a GNAC All-Star preseason player of the year. And look, he makes the steal. Good defensive player, goes inside, lays it in. That's a couple of big buckets right there for the Vikings by Jasinski. Well, and he's fired up. Make it a dozen off of turnovers now for Western Washington. 12 to two their advantage in points off turnovers. And this is a UAA team that as we mentioned, handles the ball well, foul called. That time, Western got a little bit of its own medicine as they got the matchup on the inside, the big on the small. And with the foul, a quick change is Leif Anderson gonna return. You can see Jasinski with the steal. Goes inside, Brimhall tried to get back, just wasn't able to do so. And Jasinski, nice body control, he lays it up and in. 2.40 left in this opening half of play. Looking for the right to win the GNAC championship. Here's the inbounds off the hands of the Seawolves. Another turnover. And that is something the Seawolves are going to have to certainly discuss at halftime. And here's Rojas on the angle left. He had 16 against Montana State Billings for his season high. Leaves behind for Anderson. Why not? Fires a three, missed it. His first miss from long range tonight. But he certainly had the range on it. And now Hosley going to take it back the other way, lay it up and lay it in. Boy, I tell you, he challenged Rutherford at six feet nine and Rojas at six feet six and managed to get it to drop. Anchorage has been creating a lot of their own shots in the first half. Only one assist so far for the Seawolves compared to the seven on the other side for the Vikings. And here's a blocking foul out high on Bremhall. And remember, we talked about this just a moment ago. One assist for the Seawolves for the team that leads the GNAC in assists. And here is the foul there as Bremhall tried to jump in front of Rojas, wasn't able to do so. And Sion now looking for double figures as off the bench, 
Rutherford going to take a breather as returning for the Vikings. Luke Lovett Lady out of Tacoma, 6'8". Again, Vikings, 6'9", 6'8", 6'7", 6'8", 7 feet, 6'6". Six, six. A lot of size on this team. And Rojas knocks down the free throw. And everybody started to head back down floors like he does get another he one. He still got another. Yeah. Well, the way Rojas has been playing tonight, I'll tell you one thing, he has been a, a big part of this lead that is now at 14 as he hits both free throws. Vikings, as you mentioned, won the previous two meetings this year, but they were very competitive. Right now, they have bumped it out to a pretty significant cushion. Hosley to Brimhall, he'll bring it off left. Hand to Carlberg, coming around the outside, trying to take, take Lovelady off the bounce. Put up a runner in the lane, good, it'll count. And a rebounding foul as well. Now they're gonna call the foul on, it looks like Seacrest gonna be called for the foul too as he and Brimhall were trying to battle for rebounding position on the inside. So the basket counts. The basket, you can see it right here as Carlberg, a fall away over the much taller Love Lady. And there is the rebounding battle between those two. So I think Brimhall is gonna be, well, now the officials gonna take a, I think they may take a look at it right here in just a moment at the monitors. We have a momentary stoppage in play. 1.30 left in the opening half. And it is gonna be University of Alaska Anchorage at the free throw line here momentarily, Cameron Rutherford is going to come back in. And again, that, those are just two guys battling for inside positioning there. And well, again, the officials decided to call the foul. Now they're gonna take a, take a little peek and we'll know a little bit more here in just a couple of moments. You know, Rojas, we've been talking a little bit about him tonight for Western Washington. There's a good look at Rusty Osborne and the University of Alaska Anchorage bench. Rojas, he scored a lot tonight, but he also is a good assist man. He had a 13.10 assist double-double versus Fairbanks just about a month ago. So, I mean, he can, he can dish and he can shoot as well. And at 6'6", he's a strong defender and strong rebounder, and he's been, done a real nice job out there tonight. And you can see him on the rebounding lane left there in that second position. Brimhall was fouled. Shoot two. And he'll be able to, if hits here, cut this to a 10-point lead once again. Well, as you look at the season numbers for Western Washington and what they've been able to produce, they got six guys averaging at least eight points this season. And when you watch them on the floor, if any of these guys were playing in different programs, you could have a couple of 20-point scores. Oh, yeah. So when you get them all together, you create this extremely diverse, potent offense, and you just know, don't know who's going to go off on any given day. Rojas guarded by Hosley mid-floor. Off to Rutherford, double team comes. Nice job defensively, not the ball away from him, but Rojas saves right in front of Rusty Osborne. You can see him sitting calmly on the bench there. Shot clock in single digits. And so Rojas says, I'll cast a three and hit it. Wow. That gets Rojas to 11. He's the first player into double figures in this one. And here is the Seawolves attack, down by 13 inside the final minute. McDonald on the baseline, looks for cutters, goes out. Bevins, three on the way, good. That was a big three by Nico Bevins. I believe that's his first three-pointer yeah, of the night. We hadn't seen any scoring from him yet. It's only the second shot he has taken in this game. And now Rojas to Jasinski, lift fake on a three and foul by McDonald. McDonald and Jasinski, by the way, as they got matched up there, those are the two players from the Great Northwest Athletic Conference who are named Tito Cosida all district, all academic team. A couple of heady players there on the hardwood. And at the free throw line, Jasinski, leading Viking scorer on the season at 14.8 points a game. And he has two coming here and he, well actually a one and one and he knocks in the first. So one more to come for Jasinski. Making a case certainly for MVP of the tournament if he leads his team on to victory here as he hits them both. And 
And Hosley going to come to the sideline, and with 24 and a half seconds left, he will call a timeout, and we will keep things right here. 30-second timeout on the floor, a 12-point game. As you take a look at the GNAC banner emblazoned below the Falcons logo, Seattle Pacific University, the host site for this year's GNAC tournament. And I'll tell you, they've done a very, very nice job. And we're going to have the opportunity to, uh, to talk to some of the SPU folks before the tournament comes to a conclusion a little bit later tonight. Jasinski at 80% free throw shooter, and he shows why as he puts down the two free throws. It makes it a 12-point game. And after a momentary discussion with their head coach, the Seawolves come back on floor for the final 24 and a half seconds. Hosley in the backcourt. They need to have the release, and they're going to lob it way into the backcourt. Three-quarter court. Hosley goes and retrieves, and now he'll bring it into the forecourt here. Stands in the logo right there, center jump circle. And it's going to be one shot for University of Alaska Anchorage. We're inside 10 seconds. And we're now inside five seconds, and Hosley casts off and misses a three, and Rutherford with a rebound. That'll do it for the first half. So 20 minutes in the books here at this year's GNAC Men's Basketball Championships. It's the number two seed, Univer uh, Western Washington University, 45, University of Alaska Anchorage, 33 at the break. We're going to have a guest here at halftime tonight. We'll also have Dustin Daniel with all the first half numbers. And uh, you can see some of the Western faithful waving the, uh, the banners, the flags, in favor of their squad here tonight. And we're going to come back. It's going to be the commissioner, Dave Hagland, of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. He's going to join us here at halftime after this break on GNAC.TV. The world is full of possibilities. And at Montana State University Billings, we're making them a reality. It's a place to discover yourself and discover your way to make a difference in the colleges of arts and sciences, education, business, workforce industries, and allied health professions. The outcome? knowledge, skills, hands-on experience, and connections for life. It's halftime of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championships 2020 edition. It's our pleasure now to be joined by the commissioner of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, Dave Hagland, joining us here at courtside at Brougham Pavilion. And you've been up kind of high above overseeing this year's tournament, watching how things have gone. And this tournament has gone not only great on the floor, where we have seen nothing but great basketball through well, eight and a half games now, but the tournament has run so smoothly this year from end to end. So that's a that's a testimony to the work that you've done, the GNAC staff's done, and to the good folks here at Seattle Pacific University as well. Yeah, it's been a terrific tournament so far. Like you mentioned, uh, some great ball games, uh, exciting finishes uh, beginning Thursday and continuing last night, and expect that uh, today for the doubleheader final. But uh, Really want to give uh, a lot of credit to our host, Seattle Pacific, led by the Athletic Director Jackson Stava, uh, Senior Associate AD Amy Foster, and, yes. and their team. They've really done a great job. You know, they've been working on this for about two years. Uh, it was two years ago at the uh, convention in January. Uh, it might have been Nashville where we met, and uh, Seattle Pacific was awarded the bid. They've wanted this tournament for a number of years, and this is the first time they've hosted, and uh, they've really done a great job. Oh, um, they've tremendous job, no question about it. Now, the games we're playing here tonight are going to determine the GNAC champions that will move on to the NCAA Division II West Regionals. What's your take? And, I mean, there's been some crazy things that have happened. Pac West, Biola 
has come out of nowhere to uh, possibly claim a championship down there. They've been unseated, been unranked in the West region, so they could capture that spot right there. What do you think that GNAC is going to do in terms of representation this year's West Regional? Well, I think we'll have good representation. On the men's side, uh, it's looking like we're going to have two teams in out of the eight. And so uh, the winner of this game, obviously, gets the uh, GNAC's automatic bid to the uh, NCAA Regionals. Uh, Seattle Pacific, uh, the regular season champion, does not have an automatic bid, but uh, they've been ranked so high. They were ranked fifth in the last regional rankings. Uh, they're going to remain right in uh, that neighborhood. So uh, they should be safely in as well. So uh, we'll have uh, two men's teams uh, advancing to the regionals next week, likely going to be hosted by UC San Diego, right. one loss team this year. And then on the women's side, uh, anywhere from three to four teams, I think, from the GNAC will be uh, uh, at the regional. That looks like it's going to be hosted by Hawaii Pacific. But uh, uh, that will be really good representation by the GNAC once again. Well, okay, let, let, let me just put out a hypothetical here for just a second. If Alaska Anchorage, which is down by 12 at the break, is able to come back and win, has Western with the victory yesterday, and they were right kind of on the bubble down there in terms of the uh, West region, do you think they have enough uh, street cred now, if you will, to possibly get in and make that three GNAC men's teams? That, that's quite possible that, that that could happen as well. So we'll just have to see how that all shakes out by the uh, ratings committee. This is a six-member committee, two yeah. from each conference, that uh, pour over all the numbers, strength of schedule, RPI, uh, critical wins uh, throughout the season and so forth. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a possibility that uh, uh, a third team could get in there from the GNAC. Now, this year's tournament still has, well, to a full game and a half to play. I don't want to look too far ahead to 2021, but that year's tournament's going to be here before we know it, quite frankly. What do we know about that one? So about a year ago, uh, St. Martin's won the bid to host the uh, 2021 uh, GNAC Championships, and uh, they're no stranger to uh, that event. They've hosted it five times out of nine, and uh, they do a really good job there, Bob Grishin and his team. Yes. Uh, centrally located so uh really easy access there in lacey washington for teams up and down the i-5 quarter uh, who want to travel and see that and so uh even though we're not through with this one uh always looking forward to the next one and that'll be at st martin's and uh, they've already uh, begun preparing on it I as well as our team and i want to give uh, credit to uh bridget johnson oh, yeah. tete who uh, is the championships coordinator for the GNAC, does a lot of work uh, preparing for not just this championship but we host nine championships throughout the year and uh, she takes the lead on that and then we also have blake tim our assistant commissioner for media relations who who does a terrific job uh, doing all the work there from a publicity end uh, on behalf of the GNAC and our member institutions. Yeah, you kind of glossed over it, quite frankly. You talk about nine championships, but you have some of those in rapid succession. We just had the indoor track and field championships a couple of weeks ago. Basketball, we're going to have the outdoor championships in track and field. Baseball, softball still to come. Golf's going on. Rowing as well. Uh, first year for the GNAC and that as well. So uh, this is a, a conference that not only has a lot of championships, but your crew has to do a lot of work in rapid weeks, week after week, getting set for championship after championship. That's That's got to be a little bit taxing. It is. Uh, it's taxing. Uh, and this is really our busy season, really starting with the indoor track and field championships we hosted two weeks ago in Nampa. I think uh, we have about eight conference championships over a nine-week period here wow. from late February to early May. Uh, but we've been doing this for a while. Uh, and we're, we're excited to add women's rowing to uh, the roster this year. That's a new GNAC sport. It was approved last year by our CEO right. board. And uh, that championship is going to be in mid-May. It's going to be at Lake Natoma right outside of Sacramento. And we're going to be part of a major West uh, regatta. Uh, it's hosted by the Pac-12. Uh, but also the American Athletic Conference, uh, the West Coast Conference, and the GNAC will be participating and conducting their own championships uh, on that same weekend that the Pac-12 does. So we're looking forward to that. And interestingly, and I had the opportunity, and you already brought up the name of Jackson Stava, the Seattle Pacific University Athletic Director, the rowing team, his rowing team, was taking on Western Washington today, and I said I would uh, bring that up with him when we have an opportunity to talk with him during halftime of the women's championship game still to come. We've still got a full half of men's action still to come here 
at halftime. It is Western Washington on top of the University of Alaska Anchorage, 45 to 33. Thank you, my friend, Dave Haglin, Commissioner of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference, joining us at halftime of the 2020 Men's Championships right here on GNAC.TV. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Notify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us, us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. The first step is not to pick a project. The first step is to pick a problem. Every problem you approach, you look at it through the eyes of, what does God want us to do? What problem have we been called to fix? Why are we here now? And how can we use our unique skills to, to heal a little bit of hurt, to solve problems that exist? Every time a student learns something new, makes a discovery, or helps a team, it's not just good for that student, it's good for the whole community. At St. Martin's University, we know the impact a well-prepared graduate can have on the world. That's why, last year, we extended more than $11 million in scholarships to our students. Because the more we invest in them, the brighter the future becomes for all of us. On my team, I thrive to work as hard as I can. I mean, whatever you do on the field, there's a positive correlation to whatever else you do, be it personal relationships, homework, the way you carry yourself. I've changed since I got to King University. It's really helped me to develop as a leader. I think it's honestly the best thing that's ever happened. <laughs> I'm Robert Lowry, Dustin Daniel alongside. It's the GNAC Men's Championships from here at Brome Pavilion at Seattle Pacific University. That is the University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves trading it by 12 at the break out there warming up. We have yet to see the return for Western Washington, and Dustin has first half numbers from this contest. Well, the Vikings shooting their lights out right now. 59.3% from the field, 16 to 27. They were 7 of 14 from deep, 
and beating the Seawolves at their own game, taking 14 three-pointers in the first half and hitting 50% of them, led by the 11 points of Sion Rojas. He leads all scores and is the only one in double figure so far in this game. On the other side for the Seawolves, they were able to get that number back up solidly for field goal percentage. It was down in the 30s for quite a while, but end the first half, 43.3% from the field, but just 3 of 12 beyond the arc for 25% three-point shooting. Big numbers to watch individually. Nico Bevins, just three points in the first half. Only took two shots, was one of two from the field. Only saw ten minutes of play out of Agi Panovic in the first half as well. He had five points and two rebounds. On the other side for Western Washington, they only put the seven-foot center Logan Schilder on the floor for eight minutes. He had four points and two rebounds. So the battle we thought might happen underneath between Panovic and Schilder it certainly happened for a little bit, but not as much of that first half as we thought. So this is going to be quite the chess match in the second half of substitutions with the big men in the front court for both sides. How much will we see of Schilder? How much will we see of Panovic? Perhaps it'll play out like the first half and we don't see them play as much of a factor in this game and then both sides going a little bit smaller or perhaps they're saving a little bit more of that energy for the second half and we see both sides start to body a little bit more in the paint. Yeah, well, again, uh, right now, it is a 12-point Viking lead, and they have lived and died, as you mentioned, on that three-point shot. And Leif Anderson, he was kind of the wild card in the first half as he connected on nine points there. And I understand that at one point during the season, he actually made nine consecutive three-point shots during the year, and uh, he came off the bench and hit three threes. And I'm not so sure that was something that UAA had on the scouting sheet. No, Leif Anderson, not a guy that's going to be big on the radar, but he's had a couple of those games this year, as we've talked about, season-high 15 points as a reserve for WWU, so he can do it. And He was very close to being 4-for-4 four four in that first yeah. half, too. That one miss was not by much, and he goes tumbling to the ground as well. Could have easily been a foul attached to that shot. So if Anderson keeps that up in the second half, he was a huge part of that run in the first half. Could be a very easy Saturday afternoon for the Vikings. Don't have a score on this yet. This, of course, is championship Saturday pretty much everywhere. And the California Collegiate Athletic Association, they have their championship going on. Five o'clock, or actually, yeah, five o'clock. So a, a consecutive tip-off with ours, UC San Diego, taking on Cal Poly Pomona. So their men's tournament has run true to form there. In the Pac West, not so much, unranked Biola taking on number two point Loma Nazarene in the championship there with the right to advance. And it's going to be UAA with the basketball to begin this second half. But with what's happened in the Pac West over their conference tournament, Western Washington might be okay with a loss here today. They came into this tournament as the number nine seed in the West region, but I think they could survive a loss here and still get an at-large bid given point Loma at the sixth seed is the next one around them that hasn't lost yet in the tournament. Hosley makes a nice penetration. Decided to go away from the screen, went to the glass and laid it in. And again, it's a 10-point game. Rutherford, Jasinski, Schilder, Rojas, and Menace. And here's a three in the corner. Skims off the rim, missed by Jasinski. Carl Berg up ahead. McDonald goes underneath the hoop for the reverse lay-in. The reason for it is the Viking defense came back to challenge. McDonald saw it and made the old pro move to go all the way underneath the hoop and used the rim to help protect on the shot. Here is Menace looking behind him, leaves it for shoulder, off left. Jasinski, cross court, top right. Menace backs it out. Has Panovich in a switch, off to Jasinski. Into the lane, double team comes, pass in the quarter. Minnis takes the end line, goes underneath the hoop. Shot clock at three. Jasinski tees up to three and rims off. Schilder, offensive rebound. He's fouled as he went back up. Pandovich was there, but I think Carlberg is going to be the man guilty of the foul. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to they're going to ding Carlberg for that one. There's a shot by Jasinski. Schilder got it. Yeah, Carlberg reached it. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I think they're fortunate that Panovich did not pick up number three right there because that could have gone on him as well. Shoulder, there's a good look at the seven-footer, and he hits the free throw. He's capable of big nights, as we mentioned in an earlier meeting this year, 17 and 15. 17 points, 15 rebounds against this same UAA squad. 
Well, I tell you, he's got some big hands. You can see him palm the basketball there so easily with the left and shoot it and hit it. Pretty good free throw stroke for the big fella. And the Vikings remain out by 10. McDonald around the screen by Panovich. Looking to try to get him involved a little more in the offense. Here's the hook pass out to him. Return to McDonald. Panovich sets the screen. Double team comes. McDonald loses it. And look at Rutherford, the big fella coming out and helping out defensively with the steal. McDonald not happy about it. Clapping the hands as he goes back down floor. Rojas off to Minnis. He'll back it back out on the angle. Now Bevins comes out on the switch as they have Rutherford inside on McDonald with the shot clock. As you can see at five, spin by Minnis inside, up and under, and gets the shot off the rim but missed it. Panovich grabs the rebound and Hosley speeds out of backcourt into the forecourt. Leaves for Pantovich out high. Augie looks, McDonald around him, and he takes it off to the right side, working down low on Shoulder. Bounce pass inside, Carl Berglay up and in. Good find from Panovich to find the running Carl Berg through the paints. Finds I, him with the bounce pass feed inside for the layup. I've been impressed by Carl Berg in this tournament. I really have. And, you know, he's played well during the tournament. He has been averaging just under 10 a game. And here is Jasinski. Boy, he might have got away with a push off there. And he hits the shot. And that was reminiscent of the first basket he hit yesterday. Kind of that fall away jumper on the baseline. And McDonald calling for the push he really wanted as he talked with the baseline official coming back the other way. Carl Berg going to tee up the three, miss it, and Shoulders uh, grabs the rebound and quickly gets it on the outlet to Sihan Rojas. Around the high screen set by Shoulder. Off, left, three, Menace, back rim, Panovich, rebound, UAA. So it stays at nine. I, I don't think if you're Western, you want to let UAA hang around, hang around, hang around. Is, is, uh, they could get hot from the perimeter. They get it down low to Panovich. He's going to go to work on shoulder. Little pull-up shot, missed it. Follows his own rebound, goes back up and in. Good energy coming out of the locker room for Alaska Anchorage. This is now the sixth half of basketball that they've had to play this weekend, whereas Western Washington just working on their fourth. A little bit more rest for the Vikings, not having to play that third day. So fatigue, if any time it's going to play a factor in this championship, it's going to be right now. I think we saw it yesterday on the part of Fairbanks. Here is Rojas goes inside, missed it. Rebound, saved by Western Washington. Great job by Menace. Jasinski to Menace, and then Panovich knocks the ball away on the side court far side. Well, I tell you, Augie, the big guy getting after it defensively, they're trying to come up with the steal. And what we have is we've come up to a timeout on the floor. 15-52 left. It is a single eight-point game. We're down into single digits once again here on GNAC.TV. Wayne State Medical School has been my dream medical school since I was five. Athletics are important, but so is service, so is research, so is becoming a better person. And we expect you to do well athletically, but don't forget the reason you're here, which is to give back to your community and to get good grades. Back in Brougham Pavilion, Robert Lowry, Dustin Daniel, and that's Tyrus Hosley. And this is Jack McDonald with the up and under for the Sea Wolves on their baskets. And another cut to Carl's, uh, Carl Berg and Panovich with the, first of all, the assist. And there he follows his own missed shot and scores it. So Augie Panovich, all conference performer. And, well, why not? Panovich, just a junior. Matter of fact, when you look at the Sea Wolves, the seniors on this year's squad, Brimhall, Bevins, Hosley, and McDonald. The rest of these players, including Panovich, will be back next year. Osigwe going to be back. So a nice nucleus for Rusty Osborne's squad coming back. For the Vikings, Anderson going to be capping his career this year. A couple of others, Shoulder, Jasinski as well. Here is the pass down low, and Rojas going to be called for steps as he got inside. Rutherford, and also... Rojas done as well. Andy Gunberg and Rojas right there, as you can see. 
Well, a lot of contact there. They're going to say the travel. Double team by Anchorage aggressively. And Hosley now for court. Mid-floor, Carlberg. Jasinski has him. Big size mismatch there in favor of the Vikings. Screen set by Bevins. Hosley around it. High arching shot from the right free throw line, and he knocks it in. Did I mention tonight that Damon Bruland, Tom Spitznagel, and Reese King are the officials and doing a good job out there? If I didn't, that was my error. Veteran officiating crew here tonight doing a nice job. 15-10 left in the game. Out high, Rutherford. He's played a lot of minutes here tonight. Rojas out high, Jasinski, and foul off the ball. And I think it's going to go against the Vikings on shoulder. Did he set an illegal pick down there? Must have been. The foul against the Vikings is their first in this sec. Look at that. On the scoreboard, only one foul each way. Can you believe it? We've gone almost five minutes and only one foul. And it's been a fairly low foul total game. Only seven in this one for Western Washington, and it was Shilder picking up the foul on the illegal pick. Well, they haven't put it up on the board. Maybe. Okay, that's what it was indeed. And here is Bevins' turn, spin, shoots, and hits. And that's a rare two-point shot for him. But, boy, it was a quick release, no question. Impressive shot by Bevins makes it just a four-point game. And here we, it's deja vu all over again. Where's Yogi when we need him? And here is Seacrest back out to Jasinski. Screen right, uses it. Drives free throw line right, shoots, and has it off the rim. And McDonald actually got the flat-footed rebound as the ball got tipped to him. Down floor. Look at Hosley kick it out, and Bevins, well, you can see right now that Nico Bevins is starting to heat it up. That shot didn't count, but boy, he had it dialed in. Here down floor, you can see Hosley with a crossover. He, on the, on the kick out, gets the foul on Seacrest. So ball out of bounds. McDonald lob in to Hosley, and to Padovich going at Rutherford. Spins underneath the hoop, left hand hook, good. Well, what was a 14-point lead has shrunk down to two for as wow. hot as Western Washington shooting was in the first half. That's what Anchorage is doing right now. Seven of nine from the field. Western Washington, one of seven here in the second half. Menace, hook pass, Rutherford trailing, lost it in the lane, and Pantovich comes up with the steal. Chance for the tie now for Alaska Anchorage. Or to go ahead on a three-pointer, but Hosley just drives and misses the shot as Jasinski, I think, got a piece of it. Menace down floor. Seawolves head coach Rusty Osborne furious. He wanted goaltending as he thought Jasinski had it off of the glass. Menace turns, takes it underneath the hoop, and we'll see what it is. There's going to foul, going to be called against Carlberg. And we're going to have a stoppage in play right here. 13 27 to go in the game. It is a two-point contest. There's Bevins with that nice shot from just a couple of moments ago. 30-second timeout, let's keep it here. Did you think that Jasinski got it on the glass? That was such a bang-bang play. It's yeah. really tough to tell. Uh, in, in, in live time, it, it looked like it was, it was fine. But, you know, then again, Alaska Anchorage had a great vantage point of that. That was on their own end of the floor. Well, let's take a look here as we have it. There is Hosley goes up. Jasinski. Well, you know, even from that angle, he touched, He got, you know, he banged the glass, no question. But that, that's, a, that's a tough play. And it sounds like from what I'm hearing, from what I could pick up from Rusty Osborne's conversation with the officials, that's what he was upset about, not the fact that he got the ball after it uh, hit the glass, but the fact that he got the glass yeah. before the ball got there itself and he moved moved the hoop. And so that's what he wanted the goaltending for. Well, whatever the case, it remains a two-point contest here in favor of the Vikings with 13.27 to go. But as you mentioned, once again, a double-digit lead has been cut to just two points. Western with the basketball. And, well, there's part of the crowd enjoying the contest here and enjoying the company, obviously. Those two had to uh, avoid Angie Panovich coming diving at them just a couple of minutes ago. So they've had an exciting second half so far. Wow. 
They didn't seem too phased by it there, though, did they? They looked pretty happy. You can see a lot of the Vikings signs there as the Vikings have the basketball up by two. Lob it in, Rutherford, left side, hands off to Jasinski. Going to look to get it down low to Rutherford. He's going to go to work. Out now to Seacrest. Moves in, ball knocked away, ball loose on the floor, picked up Seacrest, and a foul going to be called on Pantovich, I believe, as Seacrest goes down and stays down for a moment. Yeah, Augie Pantovich picks up his third. Now let me ask you, 13-12 to go in the game. Is it, well, I... Forget it, because I won't have to ask you, because there's, there's the, the answer right hypothetical there. Hypothetical has been answered as yeah. Brimhall comes back in. Brimhall in, and Pantovich goes out of the 13-12 mark, and, well, an answer as well for Western, as they're going to go a bit smaller, too, as Luke Lovelady comes in and hitting to the bench. Rutherford now as the mop-up work. We saw Hosley do that yesterday, and he gets out there quickly and makes sure the perspiration is mopped off the floor before the throw-in. Four around the box for the Vikings on the throw in. Now they're going to flip flop sides, and here's the lob in into the right corner to Jasinski. Off to Anderson, to Minnis, and he'll reset the offense for Western Washington. Carlsberg, Carlberg defensively on Minnis. To Anderson with five on the shot clock. Gets it to Jasinski with. Three, launches and misses the three. Rebound scramble. Picked up, Seacrest had it, but Carlberg managed to take it away. And now UAA looking for the tie or to go into the lead on a three-point shot. Brimhall, who's a three-point threat. Well, you can forget about that. Tyrus Hosley is going to come up, and that's going to be a technical. Yeah. Rusty Osborne that time let the emotions get the best of him on the Offensive foul, and he is called for the technical foul. He's been running a little bit hot here yep. in the second half, so they they gave him the last one on the goaltending that he had issue with, and that was that was well, let's see his the one for right free. Here. Hosley, well, there yeah, yeah. there's no question about it. He he leaned in with that with the right side there, and and uh, I think that was a good call by the official. You got no argument from me on that one. And that was a good. That was a good view that we had. So the technical is going to be called on Osborne at the 12.38 mark in the game. And Osborne still talking things over with one of the officials here tonight. Women's action still to come between these two teams. The top-seeded University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolves taking on the third-seeded Western Washington University Vikings. So a little bit of a change as the Lady Vikes, they have had to go through the quarters and the semis to get to the championship tonight against the University of Alaska Anchorage. And there is a good look at the women's bracket. You see what happened there. Central Washington with the victory over Simon Frazier to move on to that game with Alaska Anchorage yesterday. Central had an opportunity to shoot free throws with 3.6 seconds left to potentially tie or go into the lead. They missed the free throws and UAA escapes. That was a game kind of like this one where UAA had the double-digit lead, and they saw Central chip away, chip away, chip away, and have a chance to win at the end. And they move on to the championship UAA, and there's a good look at the Lady Vikings team that we'll see in action here in, uh, oh, say about an hour and 15 minutes or so. So the technical foul is gonna send Minnis to the free throw line. And he hits the free throw. Minnis, an 88% free throw shooter on the year, so he's the technical foul shooter, and why not? And he shows why as he knocks down a couple. That's so, so a potential four or five point play here. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a big swing, especially when Alaska Anchorage was making their run yeah. to have not only all the momentum slowed down by all this stoppage of play, but then to give away points like that. If you're head coach Rusty Oz, for how long Rusty's been around? you got to be smarter about uh, picking your battles with the officials in a game like this. Well, he was very upset about that offensive foul called. Yeah. And now the Vikings looking to give themselves a little more of a, of a lead. Jasinski posting into painting. It's a smaller McDonald. McDonald fronting him down low. Anderson pull up pop on the baseline, misses it. Lovelady offensive rebound. Pitch out to Minnis. Bounce pass to Rojas. And now here's Anderson inside. His kick out into the corner stolen away by Brimhall. 
Now the Seawolves lucky, and that's only a two-point trip down the floor. Still within two possessions. Carl Berg with the basketball off to the left side. That's McDonald. McDonald and Bevins play catch out top. Now Carl Berg on the side in front of his bench. Comes around shooting a three, and it is a one-point game. This is as close as it's been all night long. That's the first three-pointer we've seen from either side here in the second half. Took over eight minutes to get one, and that gets Carl Berg to 11 points in this game. Menes jump pass. Jasinski moves in free throw line back to Menes. He tries one and hits. The Vikings get it right back. Menace wide open. Good back and forth across the outside for the Vikings. Boy, the pace is picked up. Driving inside. Carlberg put it up. And he's fouled on the shot. I was screened out. Did the foul or did the shot go down? It did not go okay. down. Now Rojas picks up his second as a result. So foul on Rojas. Free throws to come. 54-50 with 11.20 to go in the men's championship here, the GNAC 2020 Men's Basketball Championships at Brome Pavilion at Seattle Pacific. And you're seeing it exclusively on GNAC.TV. Welcome to NNU. For over 100 years, we've had one goal. Make the world a better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley. And we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs, we've got 100 of them. How does an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to 1 ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU, here for you, here for good. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Here's a three by Carl Berg that we saw just a couple of moments ago that made it a one-point game. And then Menace, he responded right away to put it back out at a four-point lead. And well, that's where we are now as Tobin Carlberg heads to the free throw line. He was fouled on the shot a moment ago. Carl Berg this year doesn't shoot a ton of free throws. This will be his 53rd and 54th of the year, but he is very solid there, just under 83%. That's some cleanup work being done on the floor down there. What, what, did, you, did you see what that is? No, I didn't, but uh, while well, we have free throws on one end, the left block on the other end, you got looks like the Western Washington athletic trainer chipping away at something. Interesting. I got itself. I don't know, something on the surface, maybe from someone's shoe. And now we got well, I don't think a lot of these players in. are wearing their street shoes out there. Today. I don't see anybody wearing wingtips out there. Maybe some gum they picked up on the, uh, on the cement out there. Whatever they do, they get it cleaned up. But again, the safety of the players is preeminent, not only in the GNAC, but certainly in any college athletics. And, hey, hey stop the play and, and make sure things are safe for them. I'm all for that. There's Rusty Osborne. UAA coach and well we talk about Carlberg why is it why is it there's that announcer's curse can you tell me why that is do you understand it it's there it it is in evidence every single game I think it's just nice coincidence I I, I don't subscribe no I I don't believe it I think there's something about it I it, it happens far too often to be just a coincidence so Carlberg goes one of two Four court Rojas who picked up the foul. Rutherford has come back in. Down low, Bevins overplays Lovelady in the post and picks up the foul. I'll tell you, he very nearly came up with the steal but got a little bit of the arm, maybe a little bit of the body. Here's a look at it. Brimball comes around the outside. Yeah, he just got him on the arm. Nearly came up with the steal but it's gonna be a foul on Brimhall instead. And that is now the fifth team foul this half on UAA. Just two on the Vikings. Rojas showing some good ball handling skills, drives and lays it in. And the lead back out to five. It had been won just a couple of moments ago. On that Carlberg three, and that is Tobin with the basketball. Has Lovelady on him and a switch. 
They were trying to post up Brimhall, weren't able to do so. And Hosley comes up firing a three, missed it. Rutherford, another big rebound for the Vikings. He's done a nice job on the window tonight. Nearly halfway through this second half of the men's championship with the right to advance to the NCAA Division II West Region as the GNAC champions on the line. Number two Vikings, number five Seawolves. Menace penetrates, and boy, Carlberg went up and came away with it. But the rebound tipped out, Rojas for three, good! Now, Sion Rojas has 16 in the game, already doubling his tally from the semifinal. Well, yeah, and again, he had 16 in the regular season finale, so he's tied his season high here. Here's Carlberg. He's going to penetrate late up with a left hand off the back iron. It bounces, bounces, and bounces through. Important bucket for the Seawolves to try and start slowing Western Washington down. Vikings got off to such a slow start, 20% through their first 10 shots of the second half. And now that they're heating back up, able to stretch that lead back out a little bit. Pantovich going to come back in after going out of the 13-12 mark. Rojas, another three. Is he hot? No, he's not as he missed it. But the offensive rebound, Rutherford gets it to Jasinski. And then Rojas with the offensive foul. Boy, bodies all over the floor. Lovelady and Brimhall collide out high. And under the basket, Rojas. Watch Rojas looking, going inside. Bumps in to Carl Burke for the offensive foul. But you can see bodies on the floor on the baseline. Bodies on floor out top. And with 9.13 left, we've come to a timeout here. Well, I tell you. This one is going to be a nail biter down to the final buzzer, I believe. Western by six on GNAC.TV. Who do you think you are? Are you the type who believes there's more than one thing that defines you? The kind of person who knows there are better things on the horizon? Cool things, explosive things, out of this world things. If so, you belong here. We are the movers, the shakers, the doers, stepping up, blowing minds, searching for answers. If you're that kind of person, this is your kind of school. UAF, naturally inspiring. Baseball for me just kind of was the glue that kept my family together, I feel like. I was able to come here and, and get my triple major as well as play a super high level of baseball against some of the best players in the country. There's a lot of options here in Division II with a lot of great ball players and a lot of great people, and they make sure that they give you every opportunity to succeed on and off the field. Shot high above Royal Brougham Pavilion, Seattle Pacific University in downtown Seattle. I had the opportunity today, and I grew up close to Seattle Pacific. And, 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 and you heard Dave Haglund say it at the break, Next year's tournament is going to go back to St. Martin's University. This is the first time Seattle Pacific has hosted this tournament, but I've got some fond memories as a youngster coming in here and, and being kicked out by Seattle Pacific University men's coach Les Hobbaker a number of times from this gym when I tried to sneak in and, and shoot some baskets as, as a youth. He didn't appreciate that. He knew he, well, I wasn't part of the Falcons team. I don't know what gave him that, that, that thought, other than the fact I couldn't shoot and I didn't have much talent, but other than that, I think I could have passed for a player. Are you saying you didn't profile as a I, collegiate guard as an eight-year-old? I didn't profile as an eight-year-old guard as an eight-year-old. But I've loved this game, and uh, this, is, this has been a special tournament for me to be back here and have an opportunity to drive around a little bit in Seattle today and see some of the, uh, the old haunts and go down to where the old wave uh, and to see it gone yeah it's absolutely gone it was it, it was amazing the the waterfront in seattle has been transformed and i imagine queen anne has changed quite a bit oh since my gosh. you were a kid as well oh, it is now well right now I, I couldn't afford the house or certainly my parents couldn't afford the house that we lived in but it's still there here's the play that the officials are looking at here so Rojas goes in. Now, you can see Carlberg. He's outside the circle. The kick out to Menace. Foul call, but out top. Yeah, that's what they're looking at. Yeah. So Lovelady had an arm on Brimhall as they went down. It was that right arm he was hooking him with. 
And it looked like Brimhall was trying to pull it up to get away from him as his momentum went back. But Rusty Osborne, from the way he's reacting to this right now, doesn't seem like he's very happy. So okay. watch the left block. Here comes Brimhall and Lovelady. You see Lovelady's hooking him with that right arm, but Brimhall also has him hooked around the front. So it looks like that's just two guys well, holding on. Let me, let me just put it this way. Rojas going inside. That was the play. Now, whether you want to call it a block or charge, I'm not going to argue that one. And they called it on Rojas on a charge there. Okay, let's let that go. But they're going to make it a double technical foul now. So one going to go on Luke Lovelady and Tyler Bremhall. So the officials decide that there is going to be the initial foul, the Rojas charge. So the ball will go back to the University of Alaska Anchorage, and each team will get a technical foul. That's the second technical of the night now on UAA. Yeah, so we've seen three total technicals in this game. The second time in this championships that we've seen a double technical called. Got one, I believe it was yesterday in the semis. But it really, other than the fact that we took a little bit of stoppage of play, no, nothing on the scoreboard. And here's Pantovich back in on Schilder, goes up with the right hand hook and scores it. And again, a four point game. And Pantovich may be the guy they're gonna look for inside on Schilder. Both of those guys have a little bit of foul difficulty. Pantovich with three, and he was out for about four and a half minutes. So with that technical, Brimhall as well has three now. So Alaska Anchorage is gonna to have to be wary of those two, Pantovich and Brimhall at three. On the other side, it's Seacrest dealing with three as well as Rojas for Western Washington. Little entry pass knocked away there. The Vikings hold it and get it back, but only four on the shot as Minnis shoots and misses it. And the rebound taken down by Brimhall as UAA went into a 2-3 zone there. First time we've seen the zone tonight. Hosley around the screen, step back three off the rim, and Jasinski climbs the ladder to come down with the rebound. Rojas into the forecourt around a high pick. Off left, Jasinski. Now they work it right to shoulder. Probably not going to fire the three out there. Gets it to Rojas. And now the... Seawolves back into the man-to-man -man defense. Out high, Rojas. Or are they going to match up out of the zone? Shot clock at five. Rojas has it knocked away. Carlberg, steal. One on one, back the other way. Squares up, three on the way, good. What a huge turn that is for Tobin Carlberg. Shot clock running down, picks the pocket of Rojas. Step back to get Rojas trailing away from him, drills the three. And with that, a one-point game, as you can see right there, Nice job by Carlberg with the pick, and as you say, he just stops. Rojas slides by, and Carlberg raises, shoots, hits, scores, and makes it a one-point game. Second time tonight we have been at the one-point cushion here on GNAC.TV. The American dream to me as an immigrant means having the opportunities that my parents didn't have. Being the first one in my family to graduate, it meant everything my parents sacrificed for me to get to this point. It was paying off. My path to a college degree would have been completely different had I not had a scholarship. It would just relieve a lot of the financial burden. When you first visit Seattle Pacific University, it's easy to fall in love with the campus. But just ask one of the students, there's something different about SPU, a place where faith, service, and academic excellence meet. And it's the only private university in the Pacific Northwest to make the latest US News and World Report best national universities list. This is Seattle Pacific University. Look at the Western bench there to the right of your screen. There's the score. And you can see a good look at the scoreboard here at Royal Brome Pavilion. Leif, or Leif Anderson has come back on floor to go with Minnis in the backcourt. Jasinski, Rutherford, and Seacrest on floor. So three guards for the Vikings against this 2-3 zone being applied by the University of Alaska Anchorage kind of matched up a little bit out of it. They go on the baseline, Seacrest on the angle. Quickly out to Jasinski, bumped and fouled by Carlberg. Carlberg trying to argue that what happened was he got hooked by Jasinski, but the official on the play 
Uh, didn't, didn't, didn't buy that. And Trevor Jasinski back up to the free throw line. 80% are on the year, leading score for the Vikings. I mean, he's just a do-it-all performer, certainly. And that's three fouls on Karlberg now, so a trio for the Seawolves with three fouls. Karlberg, Panovich, and Brimhall. But again, you got 7-19 left, so yeah, that's, not as much of a factor. Not too, not too bad at this point. If Jasinski now knocks it in, it'll give the Vikings again that three-point lead, and he misses, so it stays at two. So tie or a lead on a three here by University of Alaska Anchorage. Third missed field goal, I should say free throw of this game for the Vikings. 10 of 13 at the line as a team. Here is Bevins. Well, he pulled the string on a long three. No, instead they work it down to Panovich. Rutherford on him. Panovich going to work in the lane. Up and under. Lays it up and it'll count and he got fouled. Oh my, three point play opportunity here and University of Alaska Anchorage looking for its first lead of the game. And here is Shoulder back in. There's a good look at Pandovich going to work. Lift fake, drew Rutherf Rutherford into a bit of a bump, and the foul called, and Pandovich now at the free throw line trying to give the Seawolves a lead. And we have seen this throughout the tournament. And there is the lead, 61-60 for UAA. 14-point advantage for the Vikings, gone. Menace. Seacrest into the corner. That's Anderson. Back to Seacrest to the right corner. Minutes behind the back a couple of times. Out to Seacrest. Off to Jusinski. Minutes in the corner. Open three on the way. Off the rim. Shoulder offensive rebound. Anderson thought three. Got it out to Jusinski. And a foul called. That's going to be the fourth on Carlberg. And Jasinski, who was one of two from the free throw line a moment ago, is going to get an opportunity again right here. And Jasinski, Carlberg was closing out, thinking Jasinski was going to shoot the long one. Jasinski saw him coming and, and made the move to the hoop and picked up the foul. And Jack McDonald going to come in for Carlberg immediately. That's a big fourth foul yeah. on Carlberg. He's led the Seawolves and this game in scoring 17 points. He's been 7 of 10 from the field, 2 of 4 from deep. Including that one. Just a moment ago, where he got the steal, went down floor, and then yeah. hit the three in transition. And when you look at the intangibles, four rebounds, two assists, two steals, a block. He's just been hustling all over the place. Well, again, he, he's the kind of guy that I think any team would love. Here's the front end of the one and one Jasinski gives the Vikings a tie situation at 61 all and looking to have them regain the lead on his second free throw here. If you're wondering about timeouts, Western only has one left over the final 6.30. UAA has three. Rusty Osborne off the bench, barks out some instructions, then goes and sits down. Here is Hosley. Off left, looking into Pantovich, who comes out to the high post, get it back out to Tyrus, around the screen, takes it down the lane, shoulder there. Tyrus spins, shoots, hits, and the Seawolves. Now back into the lead as we start to go back and forth from here at Brome Pavilion. Now Hosley had to put a high arcer over the top of the seven foot shielder, but he nails it. Seacrest baseline missed the shot. Boy, big scramble for it and went off a Seawolf player there. Shielder was there. I think Brimhall was yeah. the guy who tipped it out it, of bounds. It was Brimhall. He was trying to pull it down over the top of Shielder. Puts it into a hard bounce on the floor and then rattles out. Rutherford going to come in for Seacrest here. A little bigger unit on floor for the Vikes. Corner, right, Menace. Out to shoulder. They work the top side left to Jasinski around the screen. McDonald comes out on him quickly. Now out to Rutherford. Inside, spins, shoots, and hits. Well, back and you, forth we go. Rutherford's been impressive in this tournament, starting and playing a lot in place of Jalen Green. Out with that wrist injury, the all-conference performer. 5.20 left in the game. Bevins out high. Off right, McDonald. I think he got away with a step there. Throws it up in the lane, misses the shot, and the rebound by Anderson. And now Tony Dominguez. 
Asking the Vikings to just to slow it down a little bit. Jerzinski just calling for the ball, gonna shoot it in the corner and have it in and out. Rebound Rutherford and he is fouled by Panovich and that's his fourth. I think Panovich maybe got bumped in the nose as well. Let's see, there's the shot by Jasinski and Pantovich. Oh boy, right, right under the bridge, right under the bridge of the nose. And we have a foul, a technical foul now against Tyler Brimhall. That's his night, that's his second. Yeah, and he is now sitting at four. So Carlberg, Pantovich, and now Brimhall all have four fouls. Oh, Brimhall's done. That was his second technical. Oh, he, he, you're right. We had a, that, that double tech. Personal and double technical, yeah, and he's out. Shot by Menace, the technical free throw shooter akin tonight. I wonder how many times he's been to the free throw line to shoot multiple technical fouls. I bet you I, I, I bet you this could be the first time he's done it, certainly this year. Yeah, it's, it's not often that you see a no. technical volume like this in the game. We've got four now in this contest, three of which have gone on Alaska Anchorage. So Carlberg, four fouls in, and uh, they're going to have to keep Pantovich in. And Rutherford, the man who was fouled, he's going to the free throw line to try to extend this three-point lead, and he will. So this is a huge turn, this trip yeah. down the floor. Not only got Brimhall gone with the two techs, Pantovich dealing with four. Carlberg, who they just brought out, who has four, has to come back in. Uh, the Seawolves are going to be limping into the finish line. Well, if the Seawolves fall here, and here's the next one by Rutherford, it's also good. They're going to wonder about the four points they gave away on technical fouls here tonight because right now it's just a five-point game. Bevins, near side. Rutherford's done a masterful job on him tonight, not allowing him to get going. Pantovich down low on shoulder. He's got to be careful, too, as he goes inside and a foul on shoulder. Pantovich has to be careful offensively, too, because he could, uh, you know, he, some of those moves on the inside, he gets a little bit of body in there, and he could be in trouble, too. So that affects his offensive game as well. Shoulder picks up his third personal foul. Now, it's a non-shooting foul. That's only the sixth team foul on Western. Already the Vikings in the double bonus situation. Carl Berg looking for the inbound, gets it on the angle. Guarded by Rutherford, comes out, shooting the three and hitting it. That is a big three by the Seawolves. Two-point game, four and a half left. Tobin Carlberg has 20 points in this game now, averaging just over 12 on the season, but he's stepping up big here today. And he was only a 10 here in the tournament. Into Shoulder inside, and boy, Hosley, I think, got the ball, but also got a part of Shoulder's arm. And Pantovich, he is... Got his hands on his head in dismay. Well, let's look at it and see. And here it is to Schilder. Well, yeah. yeah, sure, Hosley got him on the arm without question. He doesn't like it, but I don't think there's any question about the fact he got him on the hand. So Schilder to the free throw line once again. He hit two there earlier, and he hits here. You know, it's interesting the way uh, Alaska Anchorage has their block set up. They've got Hosley down on the block. He's just 6'1". Bevin's set up high at 6'6". Well, I think they have him out there to try to block out Shoulder, who hits them both. What you don't want is a seven-footer to miss a second, grab it, and put it down with a two-hander. That would be a momentum builder. And on the sideline, it's Rutherford now with the foul. Boy, I tell you, both teams are starting to get just a little bit uh, so they're showing emotion out there yeah. right now. Yeah. And I think both coaches need to tell the players, listen, settle it down. Still got 409 in this. Got free throws coming here by Bevins. Everything's okay. And that's exactly what we just saw Tony Dominguez do. Runs up to the far end of his box, tries to calm down Rutherford before he gets himself into trouble and is telling him, no, no, I can't get away from the official. Don't have that conversation. Bevins is just about as automatic at the free throw line as you get. 93% as he hits there. He's only missed two all year. And he still missed only two all year long. Matter of fact, with those two free throws from the free throw line, he is now 28 of 30 on the year. Wow. Four minutes left. Menace, Rojas, who hasn't scored here in a while. Anderson in the corner. 
Jasinski launches a long one and off the front rim. And, well, there's one of the reasons they let Hosley go down low because he can't board with the big guys. Two-point game, and the Seawolves looking to get into a tie or maybe a lead on the three. McDonald, Pantovich off to Carlberg around a high screen. He's going to take shoulder, get it to Pantovich down low, lay it up and in, and we're tied at 70. Really impressive that Panovich was able to get that to go, bobbled it on the way up. Didn't look like he had control of it until the very last second and just kind of pushes it in. Bevins closes out quickly on Rojas. As again, the uh, Seawolves have employed this 2-3 zone for much of the last four or five minutes. Anderson gets it down low to shoulder. Pandovich there. Well, I tell you, I think Pandovich got away with a little bit of a, a he, block there. He did the start arm. to reach over. Yeah. Couldn't keep those hands straight up. But looking at these last two possessions, Seawolves get one in the paint. Vikings can't get it done. 40 to 14 points in the paint, the difference in favor of Alaska Anchorage. Well, that's that's a bigger margin than I would have figured. And Pantovich fouled by Schilder, and now he has four. So it's going to be Augie Pantovich to the free throw line. 80% are on the year. You can see it. Pantovich goes in. Lift fake. Schilder got him across the left arm there for his fourth personal. So a lot of foul difficulty. We're going to have anybody left in this contest here. Well, we'll find out. We still have 248 to go in an even Steven 70-point game here on GNAC.TV. Billings for its academic access and excellence. I saw it as a way to reinvent myself. I chose MSU Billings for a better life for myself and for my children. MSUB has really helped me discover my career path. No matter what you're interested in, there are more than 150 programs to fit your career aspirations. MSUB has just opened up so many doors academically, professionally, and personally. It's not just about getting a degree, it's about going out and changing the world. Rutherford with his spin and a right-hander in the lane for Western Washington. And there's that play by Pantovich a moment ago. As you mentioned, ball kind of rolled up the left forearm there, but he managed to gather it and lay it in. And that's why we're at 70-70 with Pantovich stepping up to the free throw line to try to once again give the Seawolves the lead. Right now we're sitting at 70-70. Well, and the Seawolves back on top now, looking for their big lead of the game. This was a, a double-digit Vikings lead early in this second half. Pantovich knocks them both down. Seawolves have Pantovich, Bevins, and Hosley on the bottom of that zone. Actually, they're going to go kind of a 1-3-1 one, one zone now with Carlberg out top. Minnis on him, or Minnis with the ball, we should say, out high, near side. Jasinski going to take baseline, follow away, jump shot, going to bounce, tipped up and in by shoulder. That was a big play by the big fella. Panovich had to come out to try to help out defensively, and that allowed shoulder to get loose inside. Got over the top easily, the 6-1 Hosley. Big advantage there, so not much that shoulder has to do to put it back in. Here is Hosley, bounce to Panovich. They're going to let him go one-on-one -on -one with shoulder. Both guys with four fouls kick it back out to Hosley. Resetting down low, Pandovich gets the basketball, goes inside left hand, or right hand hood, it's no good, but Schilder is going to foul out here with 2.05 remaining. That's big because Pandovich, I guarantee, is going to stay on the floor until he either picks up his fifth or the remaining 2.05 of this game. And they're going to have to put Rutherford on him now instead of the seven foot Schilder. So Schilder out, 2.05, the senior. Is he playing his last GNAC game? Certainly. Is he playing his last collegiate game? That's still to be decided. I think they're going to be okay. So a breakdown of what it's looking like in the West region right now. Number seven seed San Bernardino lost in the semis and have lost their last two games of the season. Western Oregon had the eighth seed coming into this week. They lost in the quarters. Certainly they're done for the year now. And number 10, Chaminade, who is right behind Western Washington, 
They lost a point Loma in the Pac West semis. So the Vikings probably looking okay even with a loss here for the at-large bid, but a little bit of a question mark still. Pantovich knocks down the free throw, and again, that Biola squad, they could sneak in from out of nowhere. They weren't even anywhere in the top 10 in the region, and they have a chance to win that Pac West championship tonight. Yeah, that could be the deciding factor. If Biola beats Point Loma, that could be the wrench in the spokes that keeps the Vikings on the outside looking in. Right now, it is Rojas out top to Menace. NBA three off the rim. Bevins is there to clean up the rebound. Boy, Jasinski very and Jasinski nearly came up with a backcourt foul there. 140 remaining and a foul called. Is Anderson guilty of bumping Hosley as he came on the diagonal into the forecourt? Yeah, really interesting. They didn't call it in the backcourt on yeah. Jasinski. Is a lot of body. Well, you look at Pantovich there. See, and there is Bevins with the basketball. Well, Jasinski. Yeah, here it is. Gets him in yeah. the air. I, yeah, I don't know how you don't call that one. Well, Jasinski not with the foul, but Anderson with one. And there is Hosley knocks in the free throw. Now this is the big one. This is to make it two possessions. Yeah. Well, I, I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. Make free throws, win ball games. It's just that simple. And Hosley does. 14 of 15 at the line for Anchorage. Well, that's going to win you some ball games yeah. right there. That kind of shooting. Well over 90%. Rojas, as we're at the 92nd mark, Menace into the corner. Jasinski back to Menace, lift fake, stutter step into the lane, kick it out. Here's Anderson, another three for him, good. I'll tell you, Anderson's hit four of five on threes here tonight. 12 points, not his season high, but 12 important points here tonight for Tony Dominguez Vikings. Pandovich now with Rutherford on him. He's gonna reset in the post. Now actually he'll move all the way through. One minute left, one point game. Carlberg long three, good! Oh my, they're gonna call it a two. He was on the line, but Carlberg has hit Big shot after big shot after big shot here tonight. And none bigger than that one. That's been 16 second half points now for Tobin Carlberg. He is six of seven from the field in the second half and three of four from deep. And there is Anderson there. And I tell you, he has played a whale of a game as Anderson, another Bellingham product. He went to Seaholm High School. He and Schilder obviously played against each other because Shoulder played at Seaholm High School, so rivals there. But uh, again, teammates here tonight. Shoulder fouls out, but I thought he played quite well, did the big guy. And now Anderson, he has just come up with a whale of a ball game tonight with those long three-point shots. And it's a three-point game, 54.2 seconds left. If you start to think about free throw percentages, that's something I think about as we head down to the final well, final moments of this game, you got to take a look at what the teams have done from the free throw line on the year. Western, a 75% free throw shooting team. UAA, a 78% free throw shooting team. So both teams well above three out of four. Yeah, looking at the season numbers and what they've done here tonight, both teams outperforming their averages. 86% at the line in this game for the Vikings. 93 wow. for the Seawolves. I think Rusty Osborne will take that on any given night. So Vikings with the ball, down by three, and 50 seconds left. Minnis with the play on the right side to Anderson. Rojas back to Minnis. He's going to launch for the tie. He'll miss it. Long rebound scramble. Here comes Dzinski right our way with the offensive rebound. 35 seconds, Jasinski into the corner, Anderson another three, good, it'll count and he got fouled. Wow, 15 for Anderson, and he'll head to the free throw line as well. That's going to tie his season high in scoring, free throw to make it a new season high, give the Vikings a lead. Now there's 31.3, and there's the shot there as you can see. And he, and he was fouled by Panovich, and Panovich is out. That's it. That is the That's fifth five. on Augie Panovich.
So that's going to bring back. Sigway yeah. is going to come in. So guard oriented offense here. Bevin's a three point shooter on floor. Brimhall is fouled out as well. So right now, Rusty Osborne going a little bit deep into the bench. Actually, all these guys have played, but this is a small unit. Yeah, you look at the five on the floor right now for the Seawolves. A Sigway, six foot. Bevin's the only one with some decent height at six six. Hosley, six one. Carlberg, six foot, as well as McDonald. Anderson hits the free throw, and the Vikings with the lead. 31.3 seconds left in the contest. I'm assuming the Seawolves are going to run the shot clock a bit here. They got two timeouts, too. So they got a little flexibility. Down floor, Hosley, and he's going to call a timeout here. So you're right. Rusty Osborne decides to talk it over. Boy, I tell you, Anderson, and let's look at it again. Well, you, you can't fault the effort of Pantovich there, but you certainly can't fault the effort of Leif Anderson throughout the course of the game. He has been nails tonight for Western. He's got 16 points, tied for a team high in scoring, and he's coming off the bench, mind you, in those 22 minutes, 5 of 7 from the field, 5 of 6 three-point range. There is a great look right center screen of former Western Washington University coach Brad Jackson, who led this team to the 2012 National Championship with a little bit of a wan smile on his face right there, watching his pupil, Tony Dominguez, lead the Vikings into this championship game, trying to win the championship again here tonight. Right now they lead, but it's UAA with the ball, down by one, and 23.9 on the clock. Carl Bergen to make the throw in, get it into Hosley. Seacrest has come in to play defense on him. Well, apparently the Sea Wolves are going to live and die on the last shot here. Hosley with 12, 11, 10, 9. This is the way he did in the end of the first half, and he wasn't able to come up with a shot. Step back three for the win. It's off the rim, no good, and the Vikings will go to the championship. 1.1 second left, a foul called. Now Anchorage still has a timeout, so some things can happen here in the last 1.1. And they might take a look to see if they're going to put a couple of hairs back on the clock. Because I think a couple of tents might have come off after the foul was called. And certainly in a situation like this, they'll take a look. Well, you can't fault Hosley for the shot there. That is exactly the same kind of set they ran at the end of the first half. And pretty much the same story in both the first half and the end of the game here where Hosley gets a good look at his shot, just can't get either of those to drop. You know, and as we look back as the quarter and semis, those are shots that Hosley yeah. thrived with. Yep. And that was a good look, there's no question. Timeout again here with 1.1 left. Now, Jasinski gonna be at the free throw line. He'll have two shots here as both teams are in the double bonus. If he hits two, it's, it's still a three-point game, but you've only got 1.1 seconds, so what you're going to be doing basically is probably a three-quarter court heave and hoping for a prayer to be answered from long range. And, and that was the Seawolves burning their last timeout, so it looks like it was only a 30-second timeout they had left, so no chance to advance it. So that's why they yeah. take it before the first. Rusty Osborne called that, a little bit surprised, but now that we know it's a 30-second, not going to be as big of a difference. Looks like Western Washington going to put Rutherford in the backcourt to defend. Going to be interesting. There's a little bit of a shot here if you're Alaska Anchorage. Well, I don't, I don't know who is the best three-quarter court shooter for the Seawolves. And here is Jasinski. And these are a couple big free throws, quite frankly. He hits the first. I'm not a coach. Never said I was, but on this one I bounced as hard as I could off the front rim, let the scramble, yep. and let that clock run out. He does and he shoots and hits. And here is the inbounds to Hosley, three-quarter court, it's on the way and it's offline, no good. And Western Washington is going to go to the NCAA West Regionals as the champions of the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Western Washington, 81, 
University of Alaska Anchorage 78. The Seawolves campaign going to come to a conclusion at 20 and 14 overall, but boy, oh boy, did they represent their university proud. Coming through the quarters, coming through the semis and knocking off the top seeded Falcons of Seattle Pacific and then giving number two Western Washington all they wanted before falling tonight by three. An impressive victory as Seawolves Good sportsmanship being shown here as both teams congratulating each other without question. Rusty Osborne actually bringing his squad out to mid floor and he's got to be nothing but proud of our team tonight. And you've got to, and Tony Dominguez gets doused with the bucket. Well, not a, not a big bucket, but kind of a mini bucket there. And the Vikings celebrating all over the floor. Menace jumps into the arms of Rutherford. You see Tyler Jasinski extremely happy. Maybe a, a little bit of tears flowing in his eyes there. As you can see, the Vikings celebrating. UAA huddled up at mid floor right now. Arms around each other. And again, great year for the University of Alaska Anchorage to come from the five seed to get to the championship contest. And now the Western Washington University men donning the championship garb. They're gonna cut down the nets here at Royal Brougham Pavilion. Let's go ahead and run down the final numbers from this contest. Opportunity to get a conversation with the winning coach, Tony Dominguez. But here are the final numbers from the men's championship here tonight. University of Alaska Anchorage falls 81 to 78. They were led tonight by the 22 points of Tobin Carlberg. Carlberg with 22 points, 20 for Augie Pantovich and a team high six rebounds. Now he fouled out in the closing minutes. 16 for Tyrus Hosley, had the shot to potentially win it at the buzzer as you can see the Vikings continuing to celebrate here at Brougham Pavilion. Those were the double figure scores for UAA tonight. Seven points for Nico Bevins. Six points this evening for Jack McDonald. Four points for Tyler Brimhall and DeAndre Osigwe had three. Amari Hale and David Riley played briefly. They did not score. University of Alaska Anchorage 29 of 53. 55% from the field including an absolutely blistering, blistering 16 of 23 in the second half. That is just under 70% from the field, and that's what gave them the opportunity to maybe steal the victory here. And great shooting from the free throw line, 14 of 15 tonight, and not bad from three-point range, six of 19. What is a surprise is Anchorage tonight only with five assists that for a team that averages 17 plus per game on the year. Western Washington tonight had five players in double figures. Sion Rojas had 16, ties his season high. Leif Anderson has 16 and the winning three and one and a four point play to tie his season high. D'Angelo Minnis 14 points tonight. Trevor Jasinski 15 and Logan Schilder had 10. Eight points for Cameron Rutherford. R.J. Seacrest with a two, and Luke Lovelady played. He did not score. Vikings 24-54, 44% from the field, 11 of 28, 39% on threes, and they too shot lights out from the free throw line. Actually, they outscored University of Alaska Anchorage by eight at the free throw line. They hit 22 of 25 tonight, 88% there. Rebounds, the Vikings with a 31 to 24 edge. Assist department, the Vikings 11 on 11 turnovers with three blocks and four steals. UAA with five assists on eight turnovers, a block and five steals in the contest. Largest UAA lead, well, they got up by four with a minute 42 left. The Vikings were up by 14 with 2.58 to go in the first half. But UAA fought back, got into the lead. Game was tied as well. 
lead change. The game was tied six times, and there were nine lead changes in the game, many of those coming in the closing minutes. But at the end, the score, University of Alaska Anchorage falls to Western Washington, as you see the champions there with the championship banner. Final count, Western 81, University of Alaska Anchorage 78. So one of two in the books here at Seattle Pacific University's Royal Brome Pavilion. Not sure we're going to get a chance to talk with Tony Dominguez. So let's go ahead and step aside here. We're going to get set for the women's championship, which is still to come just about a half hour from now. And boy, it's going to be the University of Alaska Anchorage against Western Washington University. Mark two. That'll come your way at 7.30 here on Championship Saturday night. And you're watching it on GNAC.TV. Congratulations once again to...